pray. I wanted to talk to you today about when Jesus prayed for us. You can find this prayer in John 17, but he was praying to the Father that the people who would follow him after he left the earth would be one. He said, just as you were in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you love me. Now, he prayed this prayer just before he was taken away to be sacrificed on our behalf. So when we know that, we realise how important and significant this is. It's a really important command to love each other. He said it so many times. He says to his disciples, if I, as I have loved you, you should love each other. And because of this, everyone will know that we're his, that we're his disciples. Now, when we look at the way Jesus loved us, well, loves us, it's so different to the sort of love that we might see around us in the world. We see that he laid down his life, that he prayed for those who hurt him. It was costly. It was servant hearted. It was completely sacrificial and beyond any human love that we've ever experienced. Now, we might think that we're pretty loving people, but we've got to remember that we're comparing ourselves to the standard of Jesus not comparing ourselves to other people. And the bit that amazes me with this is that he prayed that we would become perfectly one, like the relationship between Jesus and the Father. This is a sacred relationship. We see so many times in scripture that intimacy between Jesus and the Father, there's a holy unity, they're one. And he wants that for us, for us as followers of Jesus to be like that with each other. So it's so clear, this is so important to God and it's, it's incredible. It says that how we love each other will have an impact on how other people view God. That's a massive responsibility and a challenge, isn't it? We've got to, we've got to work through issues like how do we have unity with people that we don't naturally connect with or get on with? We've got to have unity with people where we're passionate about some things and they're passionate about others. We've got to learn to think about other people more than we think about ourselves. Ephesians 4 gives us some ideas about how to keep the unity of the spirit. It says to be humble and gentle, to be patient, to bear with each other in love, to put off our old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires and to put on our new self. We're created to be like God in righteousness and holiness and we just, we're just called to love each other in that deeper way than we see in the world around us. And there are so many reasons that stop unity within the church. The very fact that it says make every effort to pursue unity shows that this is something we've got to fight for. Now, the more I think about this topic, the more I am convinced, like with so many other things, it has got to start with God. It's got to be looking at who he is. When we take time to think about his holiness, his worthiness, how incredible it is that we can even come before him, how we took our sin and our shame because of his goodness rather than ours, he sacrificed himself for us. Do we realize how incredible it is that the God who created the universe cares so much about us? Now, when we realize this about God, it humbles us, doesn't it? When we pause and we gaze at him rather than other things, we want to humble ourselves. We realize our need for him. We realize that what he says about our lives is the most important. And when we think that, we think, well, God says unity is important. It's an honor to be part of the body of Christ. When we're followers of Jesus, we're part of one body. When we look at the other people that we're part of church with, do we take the time to remember that God is dwelling in them, that we're called to love and honour them and how disrespectful it is if we treat one of God's people who he dwells in without honour and love. We've got a duty to treat each other as well, to treat each other well. And if we don't take that time to humble ourselves, 
there's that temptation to do this in our own strength. And I really don't believe that's possible. This is a supernatural love that he calls us to. So I pray for each one of you listening today that if you're following Jesus, that you would take that responsibility to love each other so seriously, as seriously as he takes it, knowing that you can't do that in your own strength, only in his. Amen.